Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Denise, and with me to present is QAD and MRP expert, Don Lindsay, to whom I will hand off in just a moment. Please know that everyone connects to the webinar muted by default, but feel free to type in any questions or comments anytime throughout the session. Type them in right where you see that, you should see that big red arrow pointing. And then during the Q&A, immediately following Don's presentation, we'll address all the questions in the order received. As far as the replay, we get asked about that a lot. And as soon as today's session is published, I will send our Encore email to everyone who registered for today's webinar. The go to replay button, the blue button as shown here, will take you directly to the webinar replay page and the questions will be transcribed and displayed along with their answers on that same page as well. That is it for housekeeping. So let's get to our headliner. Here is just some of the experience instructor extraordinaire Don Lindsay brings. Good morning. And thank you, Denise, for that nice introduction. Uh, I hope you are all having a wonderful 2021. And that most of you had the opportunity to join the Mug Wug Sug virtual conference last month on the 19th through the 22nd of April. Uh, there were 34 presentations over three days with many, many excellent subjects and papers on new and valuable functionality in QED. <clears throat> These are available either through the WOVA website or the MUG website, and I just received an email that said they are also now up on the West Coast User Group uh, website. I would highly suggest you view as many as possible. Over the last several months, we have talked about several aspects of QED's ERP system, dates in QED, the impact of COVID, services support. And today I would like to take a look at one aspect of the supply chain that basically drives all of ERP. And that is the functionality that is referred to as sales and operations planning. And just a word, if you remember my discussions of idiomatic versus nobothetic, I'll use that terminology uh, several times today. Today, we'd uh, like to cover just a bit about the concepts and history of sales and operations planning. And then we'd like to look at how QED handles the specific areas of system setup, enterprise operations, planning line, uh, resource planning, and reporting for SNOP. So how would one define sales and operations planning? Sales and operations planning is basically an integrated business management process through which executive and leadership continually achieves focus and alignment and synchronization among all functions of the organization. Done well, the SNOP process enables an effective supply chain management. In the 1950s and early 1960s, some leading manufacturers, uh, companies like uh, GI Case, Twin Dist, Black & Decker, and others, developed a new method for replenishing and managing inventory. Uh, some of us refer to this as MRP, and we've talked about uh, that process before. In the mid-1970s, Ollie White, already a leading consultant in the field, was writing his book, Production Inventory Management in the Computer Age. He pointed out the important concepts that were needed to engage executives in the material and capacity management process. He called the concept of looking at forward production uh, volumes as opposed to detailed schedules and mixes of products needed immediately as production planning. Dick Lynn, an Ollie White associate and a pioneer on important concepts like master scheduling and forecast consumption, was the first to articulate this refinement of the production planning concept. He coined the term sales and operations planning, SNOP, to describe it and started to use that term in 1987. Sales and operations planning has several objectives. It supports the business plan. 
It ensures that the strategic plans are realistic before being passed down to the tactical level. It enables organizations to effectively manage change. It provides for finished goods and order backlog to support customer service. It enables performance management to identify when actual performance is deviated from the plan. And it enables the organization to be aligned, focused, and engaged. Major aspects of SNOP are it balances supply and demand at a product or high family level. It plans in volumes across aggregate time uh, buckets, not at the individual end item level that we see in the master scan and MRP. It enables a better understanding of customer and market opportunities and company capabilities. It involves all departments and is a demand and strategy driven process. So let's look at the flow of SNOP. It starts off with demand. Demand feeds into that forecasting process and then that drives down to a product plan, a marketing plan, and a sales plan. The demand management process then feeds into the demand planning aspect of sales operation planning. And sales operation planning, supply planning that takes place to look at production, resource, inventory, and distribution processes. <clears throat> there, uh, at the high level, the sales operation planning process is fairly straightforward. There's a list of monthly activities or processes that start with gathering and managing demand, developing the demand plan and reviewing to actuals, developing supply chain, reconciling plans and activities, and then taking it to the executive management team for approval and release. <clears throat> Many companies think that implementing sales and operation planning is uh, simple stuff. It's not. It takes a, comp a concerted and dedicated senior management team to understand operations and functions of NSNOP, to execute it on a regular and consistent basis to manage the company. Here is just a short list of some of the obstacles that companies typically face. A lack of strategic coordination an insufficient interaction with all the groups and departments, a lack of common vision, a lack of commitment on the top of on the, uh, top management, a uh, lack of technology uh, and a belief in existing businesses. I don't know how many times I've seen that with QID. Inadequate communication and software skills and insufficient training or skills data management. All of these have very little to do with software. They have more to do with human and process issues. Gardner has developed what they call the five stages of SNOP uh, maturity. The question is, where are you and your organization on this maturity scale? Most companies are trying to get to three. Stage one, most QED users, planning in Excel some planning and MRP, but just basically preventing shortages and uh, trying to maximize profit. Uh, stage two, enterprise, they use uh, some planning in MRP. Stage three, uh, we talked about Dynasys. Dynasys uh, uh, is the tool that you can use to have uh, shortage alerts. Uh, SNOP becomes a tool. The stage four moves on to a demand driven process where stage five is uh, a coordinated decision making across the enterprise and network to create value across the full planning horizon. I got this from the Apex uh, Monodog chapter and it talks about the fundamentals of SNOP. These are the things that you probably ought to have in place to attain that fifth stage of SNOP tree uh, maturity. First is tiered planning horizons. We talked about uh, dates in QED uh, at MUG. This looks at strategic long range horizons, tactical horizons at the mid range family levels, and then day to day operations. The 
sub processes uh, associated with sales operation planning must be integrated. It drives down from a corporate plan to a demand plan to the supply chain and planning down into uh, production strategy, capacity, distribution, and design. Leadership accountability starts at the top with the executive SNOP team. They make the decisions. There's an executive sponsor who sets top management expectations. There's the sales and operations planning leader. They lead this SNOP process. Demand planning team, forecast and market positions. The supply chain team, which sets uh, production plans to meet demand. And then the SNOP team as a whole. Leadership accountability answers the question, who are the owners of the SNOP process? Without effective governance, SNOP planning, control, and execution with improvement will not be realized. Uh, SNOP is basically the heart of data analytics. This allows us to tell the SNOP planning teams where we are what actions need to be taken, what results and trends are emerging from our uh, decisions, and what correcting actions should be in place to bring execution into balance. The use of artificial networks, neural networks, uh, advanced statistics or tools in this process. Uh, performance measurement, a tiered approach to sales and operations performance, makes the SNOP process rigorous, disciplined, and factual. So executives gain competence and confidence in the integrity of that SNOP process. From this forecast variance to inventory carrying costs down to fill rates and material labor and overhead costs, this helps the organization uh, use the SNOP process. Uh, you're probably going to need some grids, graphs, spreadsheets, and, and pretty pictures. Uh, we need to remember that we're dealing with senior management. Senior management doesn't like reading reports and numbers. They like a visualization, the representation of an object situation or set of information uh, based on a chart or other image. This helps senior management understand what is going on. Change management, any SNOP process is 60% change, 30% uh, process development, 10% technology. <clears throat> change management drives the acceptance of the process itself by senior leadership and allows us to train employees to understand and accept the changes that are going to be implemented through the SNO uh, changes. I just learned recently that uh, the SNOP pioneer Tom Wallace had passed away on March 4th of this year. Tom was one of those mentors that taught so many people about SNOP. Tom was recognized for emphasizing how important accurate forecasting is and the use of SNOP as a tool. You'll be greatly missed. Here's a, just a list of the books that uh, Tom has authored. I highly recommend any of these for a better understanding of how SNOP works. We always recommend for any function in QED, it's a good idea to first have somebody explain it. The second, bottom line, you have to read the user guide. And third, go in and hit the keys in some test database. Today, I'm going to do number one. <clears throat> sales and operations planning in QED is a great tool. QED can act as a strategic tool for long-term labor equipment and cash needs. Uh, it can also be used as a tactical tool to optimize inventory and production levels to develop schedules for sites. Some of the prerequisites that you might consider doing is setting up focused factories, uh, consolidating purchase across sites and defining your target inventory coverage on a, a level or a global uh, level as opposed to by sites. <clears throat> now that we've seen and have a pretty good idea what sales and operation 
uh, planning is, where it came from, its history. Let's take a look at how SNOP is enabled in QED. QED uh, functionality lies in the menu A2, supply chain. We don't have time to cover warehousing, purchasing, uh, DRP, which we'll talk about in September, or EDI, but uh, we'll concentrate on the production plan, the resource plan, and the operations plan. Here we see the product line plans. This creates product line plans for a particular site of what is going to be sold, shipped, produced, along with inventory and backlog. The resource plan in QED, menu 21, addresses apex concepts like RRP, resource requirements planning, and rough cut capacity planning. Here we have the ability to define resources, uh, product line resource bills, and item resource bills. The operations plan menu in 33 contains most and several of the functions required for sales and operations planning in QED. This is address, it addresses the system setup, family members or family setup, item setups, family processing, and then we'll look at uh, enterprise operations uh, planning menu, talk a little bit about a simulation plan and performance measurement. The 33.1 uh, is where you set the system up. As with all modules in QED, uh, it starts with a control file. In this case, 33.1.24. There are several check boxes that uh, you probably need to be aware of if you're going to use operations planning. You have to check the box. This uh, allows the system to integrate with other modules in the system, like product line uh, maintenance and uh, run setup crews, etc. Uh, you can designate a default weeks of coverage that can default uh, throughout the system. And then you can uh, use the system to move data back and forth between holiday periods if you've set up your cal uh, calendars properly and or use uh, decimals. And uh, you probably want to use rounding at the sales and operations planning level. Uh, we covered this in our Dates and QED webinar. The calendar cost reference build links the calendar year to the corresponding physical periods in the GL. This helps senior management look at data as it relates to the finances or money. If you plan to import operations planning from sites and other domains within a single database or in separate databases or uh, other Outside QED non database, non QED databases, consistency in coding for items, sites, etc. is critical. You need to have the same language in all of your systems. Uh, so beware of the 1.1.13 site maintenance and the designation of domains as it approaches, uh, assigns that. Operations planning lets uh, one look at both the nomothetic level with regards to families and the idiomatic level with regards to specific items. If we hark back to our discussions of the definition of independent demands in APEX, uh, we look at what is sold to a customer would be included in the SNOP process. Uh, before you implement data in the family level, you first must implement the standard system and the enterprise operation planning manual. These should all be created. Uh, if you look here from the uh, supply chain management user guide, you can see that the setup of family data, uh, defining hierarchies, establishing target inventory, and product costs. For operations planning, family archives or family hierarchies define several things. The nature of the demand relationships for product families and, and sub-family uh, end items, percentage of total families forecasts, and which marketing sites generate sales forecasts. To set up uh, hierarchies, you use 33.3.1, family hierarchy maintenance. Uh, checks for cyclical uh, relationships, and you should always start 
at the lowest level, work your way up to the highest level. And subfamilies for the lowest level should always be your end items. The 33.3.1 uh, family hierarchy maintenance allows you to set up the family levels and sub levels and then define your percentage of forecast of the sub level to the family. There's three programs that allow you to look at this the inquiry 33.3.2, uh, the report.3, and then the where used, which is very similar to your 13.7 in the bill of material. Uh, your 33.3.8. Uh, you can set the family cost for an item. Uh, here you can set the uh, cost relationships. You can uh, put various production rates and costs associated with those. You can uh, use the 33.3.6 to change relations and add, delete, replace uh, family relationships in that hierarchy, and then you process. So once you have created your families and sub-family hierarchies, if you have the need, you can then uh, address the process of consolidating these on a global uh, basis. The 33.7.1 global consolidation generates the family plans. It uh, shows you sales forecast, target inventories, uh, production quantity on hand and weeks of coverage at that global uh, level. You can use 33.7.3 uh, global production maintenance displays and in items uh, family. And here you can see uh, the manipulation of that data. The 33.7.13 family plan roll up. Uh, this is like the bill of material or routing roll up in operations. You can then explode the family process. This is used to calculate the dependent production demands for subfamilies in the family hierarchy and transfer control of the production quantities to the end item level. Uh, end item data overview. Uh, typically, companies, once they've set up the family levels, they probably are going to want to use short to medium terms uh, at the end item level to optimize inventory, develop production schedules, and then be able to identify variances between plan and actual. Most operation planning records are associated with a specific site. Be careful with how you set that up. All items are associated with product line. Obviously, that's where you get your uh, GL account numbers. Then we talked about the creation of family levels. And if you use units of measure that are different in different sites, be sure you pay attention to the unit of measure conversion process. Before you implement the end item operations plan, you should implement again the standard system and the operation plan. Here we see from the supply chain management user guide, setting up the end items, what are called source matrices, line allocations, and target inventory. The 33.13.3 item site maintenance. Here we use this to record end item sales, production, and inventory for the family plan operations and performance measurements. Usually you use this to collect planning data from sites in non-inventory or non-QED uh, databases. Then once you've got that information, the item site maintenance, you can do the item site consolidation. Uh, the 3313.6 creates operation plan records uh, for those quantities that were loaded in the item site date and maintenance. Uh, and these are usually, again, used to record non-QAD databases. The 33.5.1 weeks of coverage. Weeks of coverage. You should think long and hard and understand what weeks of coverage means in the cost of inventory. Think safety stock and MRP. You can set the minimum weeks coverage, average weeks coverage, and maximum week coverage. You use these factors to manage the items target inventory uh, levels. You can also set 
uh, coverage by date. Uh, if target inventory levels vary by time period, you can use the 33.5.5 to set the coverage by minimum average or maximum for uh, start and end dates. You can use this to manage varying target levels for both family and items. However, it requires a lot of maintenance and uh, update to keep this uh, accurate. You can see this in two reports, the weeks of co coverage inventory, inquiry and report 33.5.2 and 33.5.3. Uh, you also have the 33.5.6, the coverage by date and 5.7 coverage by date report. Uh, for operations planning, the item is source matrix defines the nature of the supply demand relationships for end items. It identifies marketing sites that generate sales forecasts. It also defines how operation plans dis or uh, calculations distribute global production demands to supply sites. <clears throat> so you set up in 33.5.13 the source matrix maintenance. The item, you can set the item sites and then you can uh, again set the supply percentage for this particular item to a supply site. The 33.13.8 source matrix explosion. This is used to calculate the operations plan for end items. The source matrix explosion is the link between the long-term planning and the mid to short-term planning, which usually is from about a week to uh, one year. And this shows the calculated target inventory, calculated production due. You can use MRP order policies or planning time frances, or you can actually uh, use actual inventory in the calculation. Two programs to view this, 33, 5, 14, and 15. Uh, you then uh, come to 33, 13, 17, and 21. Here we see the sales, inventory, and production planning for operation planning level. Uh, this displays and records sales forecast and actual quantities. Again, if you use this, you're going to be actually creating records. This allows you to input the sales and look at actual. <clears throat> the 3317 inventory data maintenance allows you to look at and set target inventory levels versus actual on hand. And the production looks at the production due that you want to build versus the actual production history. <clears throat> Using uh, supply charts, the sites, items can be produced sometimes at one or more production lines. The line allocation defines how the production is distributed uh, between those lines. The 33.5.17 line allocation maintenance allows you to define that maintenance so that when you use your 22.20.1 planning and scheduling workbenches, uh, that will be uh, incorporated in that. If you have not exposed yourself to 22.20.1 uh, master scheduling workbench, I highly recommend that you uh, get uh, an understanding of how that works. They've basically taken a whole bunch of inquiries and reports, combined it into one functionality uh, menu, and you can do everything from this one uh, screen. Great, great stuff. Setting target inventory levels uh, in operations planning, we calculate global target inventory levels to support an item's sales forecast. There are basically three ways to establish these global targets for end items. Number one, you can calculate target inventory based on production uh, demands exploded from the family. This is the easiest method. Uh, two, you can calculate Inventory targets based on manual records. If you want to manually input it, this is obviously the most precise method, but uh, it requires a fair amount of upkeep. Or you can 
calculate this based on the weeks of coverage. For this method, it supports inventory buildup, uh, seasonal sales, etc. The tracking of family production costs using 33.3.13, you can set up uh, items family costs. These records uh, reference information for product cost on product families. However, the operations plan does not use this in the family calculations, but it is extremely beneficial for uh, keeping track of product family costs. You can see those family costs in 3.13 of 14 and 15. And then uh, if you have families or items that are used in multiple sites, uh, you'd probably want to It'd be able to consolidate these and look at volumes as an aggregate. If you use the item site consolidation process to do this to collect data in item sales, inventory, and production from a <coughs> range of uh, sites in your data. The 33.13.1 transaction data load uh, is the process that you use to collect and item sales inventory and production data for a range of sites. The transaction load does many things. It updates sales forecasts. It uses uh, gross requirements. If any of you are familiar with the new op, uh, MRP or Kanban policy of gross requirements, see uh, GRC, you should probably look at that. It updates actual sales, updates actual uh, production, include PO receipts, you can update in actual inventory, uh, and you can include non-inventory if you uh, want to. So you really need to understand what that particular menu is going to do. The 33.13.3, uh, item site date and maintenance. This is where you uh, record uh, item site data maintenance for end item sales and production. It's used in family operations performance measurements. The 33.13.6 consolidation. Once you've put all that information in, then you can use this consolidation to load data from non QAD records. So now that we've covered uh, system setup, calendar maintenance, families, item setup, target, tracking costs, uh, and item setup and consolidation, uh, let's take a look at the enterprise sales and operations planning process. There are many useful features for this. Uh, plan at the family or end item levels. You can do demand consolidations across multiple sites. Uh, you can look at production demands based on sales forecast. Look at target inventories, inter-site supply and demand, resource planning, product line scheduling, performance measures, and simulation planning. Uh, regardless of how you set up the enterprise operations plan, it's important to set up the data correctly, not only in the module itself, but from all modules that interact with uh, the sales operations or operations planning module. <clears throat> Such things as uh, domain setup, general ledger, DRP, items, work orders, repetitive MRP are going to feed data into the sales and operations planning, operations planning level for uh, database connections, holidays, calendars, data, uh, sites, resource. So you need to be uh, aware of all of those issues uh, before you implement the sales and operations plan. If we hark back to our slide number nine, to find how you do sales and operations planning, here it is in, in terms of QED. You collect the data, measure performance, develop family plans, develop your operations plan, and then transfer uh, production demands to operations. The operations plan uh, menu gives us the setup, family, all that we went through. So let's take a quick look at the enterprise operations plan. Here we see 33.15, enterprise operations plan menu. Uh, we've got an operation plan maintenance function, we've got line and site utilization. We can explode those operation plans and go through an approval process and then talk about the way that we balance the operations plan against MRP. Talk about that in just a bit. The 3315.1 operations plan level. 
This displays the items operation plan at a site level. You use this plan to review and modify the site level production due quantities. Here you can see where you set up forecast, global target inventory, site production due, your global projected quantity on hand, your projected and your coverage. The operations plan level, basically the same functionality as the production line level we saw in 33.15.1. Uh, you can use the 33.15.13 operations explosion to generate work orders for operations plan production due quantities. The 33.15.14 operations plan approval this basically gives you opportunity to freeze the orders generated through the operations plan explosion so that subsequent uh, planning explosion don't replan them. Uh, the 3315.17 balanced target inventory to MRP, there's a gap between the operations planning and DRP processing logic. The gap is the target inventory. Operations plan generates orders to cover both sales forecast and target inventory. But MRP, DRP, generates orders only for the sales forecast. When you encounter target inventory orders, it cannot link them back to the sales. To fill this gap, you must run this balanced target inventory uh, and MRP uh, menu. The 33.15.9, uh, line utilization maintenance displays line schedules for items manufactured on production lines. You use this to schedule production for operations plan. Uh, just a quick reminder about utilization. Remember that utilization is the actual hours work divided by the available hours. And when you multiply those two together with the efficiency, you get the productivity factor, which then is used to modify the available capacity to give you a rated capacity value. You can see that uh, in the 3315.9 line utilization maintenance, where it displays the global sales forecast, production due, scheduled line quantities, scheduled line orders, projected quantity on hand coverage, and uh, line utilization with the free hours available by hours by product line and item. The resource plan is critical to understand how plans load and resource capacity balance at an aggregate or site or end item level. These tools give you that visibility and control. Here we see the ability to create resources, the ability to create a product line bills and item bills and summary uh, load reports for each of those. 21.1 uh, resource management this is where you create your key resources for cash, facilities, labor, whatever you feel you need to look at in terms of resource uh, validity. Then you set up your resource bills, you manage and track it, and measure your uh, over or under capacity. 21.5 PO resource build. Here you can build your bills of resource and give the system the ability to do your rough cut capacity and your resource requirement. Here's a quick little spreadsheet we worked through through our 2018 capacity planning. You can see it's a very simple process. This basically is automated through this resource planning uh, set of menus. The 21.10 uh, product line resource summary shows your work days according to calendar capacity at the resource load over and under capacity and uh, cumulative load the 2117 item resource bill allows you to create bills of resource for your end items and then the 21.24 item resource uh, detail report displays the uh, individual item resource requirement for that part the product line plan process uh, allows you to create product line plans, shipment order, production, inventory, and backlog plans. The 20.1 20 production plan, uh, this is what's going to be produced and shipped. You can develop your ship plan, what you expect to ship per month and the costs associated with that. Your orders plan, you can develop your production plan maintenance by product line. Uh, the 2017 inventory plan maintenance, 
allows you to say what you're going to have on hand at any given month or site. Uh, you can also use the simulation planning process. Simulation planning, uh, here you can see the 3317, which allows you to create and copy plans from simulation to actual. Uh, it gives you the ability to create those uh, simulation plans by the 3317-1. In 3317-13, you can simulate uh, plan maintenance. You can do it at the product line level. And then in 3317-19, you can do the simulation line utility maintenance. Performance maintenance <clears throat> gives you the visibility of sales, inventory, and production, along with a performance management. Uh, you should implement most of the other required modules before uh, implementing the operation planning. This system takes quantities from quantity complete. Repetitive schedules, purchase tricks, uh, sales shipments, inventory balances, and allows you to look at performance for sales, inventory data, production data, and the <clears throat> 3319.24 gives you a nice report of the item, uh, the plan versus actual for sales, plan versus actual for production, and plan versus actual for inventory. Security for most operation planning programs uh, are used to prevent unauthorized changes in master data, family, or operations plan. You really should pay attention to your roles, your permissions, your memberships to guard against people inadvertently uh, changing this sales and operations planning level. A couple of utilities, you can recalculate uh, summary records, you can re-update production line updates, and then you can use the ops planning conversion uh, to be compatible with the ISO 8601. As uh, with most things in QED, the use of the process maps are very, very helpful. Uh, if you haven't looked at sales and operations planning in detail, it can be a little intimidating to understand the setup and processing requirements in addition to simply the sequence of activities. This is where process maps come in very handy. Here we have the setup of the operations uh, planning. You can look at uh, how you load data, planning, scheduling, forecast, verifying uh, capacity. These are extremely uh, helpful tools for understanding and implementing the sales and operation planning. A good way to understand SNOP or any other function at QED is to look at the menu structure and use that menu structure as a guidance or guide for implementation and operations. We looked at 20, 21, and 33. There are 89 menus in those three menus. You should understand each one of those, how they operate, what they interface with to truly implement and utilize the sales and operations planning. The other mandatory document or process is the reading and understanding at the idiomatic level of the QED user guide. In this case, the supply chain management, I uh, use the 2020 EE. You should read and understand that. So we've covered a lot of ground today from understanding the concepts of CES and OP, the history, what it means in QED, we looked at family setup, we've looked at production plans, how to define resources, we've looked at the operations plan, uh, simulation planning, and performance measurement. SOP is not a simple process. There's lots of resources out there for you to understand how to use it, from Apex to the QED formans, uh, forms, the knowledge base, the document library, learning uh, process. And 32Soft is there for you with several loaders and applications that can assist in the SNOP process. Again, uh, the amount of information required to run and operate a modern ERP supply chain application are voluminous. 32Soft loaders use a simple Excel format. Uh, they can handle large volumes of data. It's easy installation. 
60-day complimentary trial, and they all work with SEEE and the cloud. We hope you've enjoyed this review of some of the functionality that will assist you in your use of SNOP. We wish you the best for 2021. And please contact myself, Denise, Alex, or Nancy if you have any questions at the close of the webinar, and we will get back with you as soon as possible. Thank you, John. Information packed as always. Thanks very much. Let me flip back real quick here. And for anyone who may have missed the beginning, we are going to move right into the Q&A. And where that red arrow is pointing is where you can enter any questions or comments you might have. And I do believe there is one question to start. Yes. Is 33.5 or supply chain module available in QAD 2014 SE version? Do you know that offhand? Mm, uh, I do not know specifically about uh, that version of QAD, uh, but it has been in the uh, both S and S E N E E uh, modules. I believe it probably would be available, but I will. Uh, we'll have to check and uh, and make sure. But yeah, yeah, I believe that functionality is available. Okay, thanks, Don. And as mentioned at the beginning as well, um, any questions that we receive, we'll transcribe at the end and we'll include the question and answer when the replay is published. So if we don't have the knowledge off the top of our heads, then we will get that resolved for you. Um, that is the only question, unless anybody else has anything to add. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and move along and then I can circle back and check on any additional questions before we close out. So to be conscientious of everyone's time, let's uh, take a little real quick about training. We do get a lot of questions and yes, we are happy to help with your training needs. I do need to update my stats, but Don has had more than 665 trainees among more than 23 custom sessions. So let us know if you need any assistance, individual or group, or and of course, at any level, and we'll be happy to get that conversation going. Also, upcoming webinars. Next month, next month, we have Getting the Most from QAD's EMT, which is followed by Simplify with QAD's production orders in July. Um, please note that um, balancing inventory and customer need with DRP will be held in September. That one was originally scheduled for July, so we just kind of flipped that out, out by a month. Um, and since we're back talking about webinars, uh, let's reflect briefly. Today's webinar is Achieve Successful Sales and Operations Planning. Why? Well, because goals require plans. As Picasso said, our goals can only be reached through a vehicle of a plan in which we must fervently believe and upon which we must vigorously act. At the beginning of his presentation, Don mentioned the human and process challenges. Specifically, Don cited lack of or insufficient coordination, interaction, involvement, vision, belief, and that's a lot, but there were also others. So be sure to take a look at which might apply to your organization. If we want folks to vigorously act, first we should probably be sure fervent belief is shared. Um, taking a quick look now, and we do not have any additional questions. Uh, Don, is there anything else we need to cover today? Uh, I just uh, wanted to uh, thank you. I don't know where you come up with these amazing quotes, but. Uh, <laughs> That uh, that just uh, I guess Picasso knew all about sales and operations. Uh, right. Planning. Yes, it's uh, it's amazing, amazing. It's, but yeah. uh, yes, uh, sales and operations plan. Uh, the actual implementation and uh, manipulation of the menus, the sequence is uh, a little intimidating, but uh, it is the way that the senior management can control the whole business across R&D, operations, finance, uh, supply chain. It, it is something that uh, all of us should be uh, trying to get to that uh, at least stage three 
of the supply chain maturity uh, scale that uh, Gardner put out. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it is a tool that uh, can yield great results and uh, really is a tool within QAD that I think is underutilized. Uh, and if you look at it, understand it, plan it properly, as Mr. Picasso says, I think it can yield uh, great benefits for all of us. So thank you for your attendance. Uh, next uh, month, as Denise says, we'll talk about EMT, Enterprise Material Transfer, and then uh, on through the uh, summer. So thank you for your attendance. Uh, Denise, I'll turn it back to you. Yes, and thank you, Don, as always, for bringing so much knowledge to each of these sessions. We very much appreciate you and your time. And thank you all, as always, very much for joining us. And um, have a great and productive day. And hopefully we will see you back here next month. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.